you can probably tell by the intro, uh, I've only got about an hour or so to fish today, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, one of those situations where time's against me. Uh, but I thought I'd cram in a little video here, as you can see, using a pen surf blaster, using a 50 pound braid straight the way through. Uh, the braid I'm using is Pro Braid, the four strand, 50 pound line there. Um, 0.37 mil for those that are interested. Lead's only going to be a three and a half ounce lead today. Bit of a swell in the water, tides are picking up a bit, but with that continental rod and those grips uh, tightened up, uh, that will hold bottom quite nicely, I think. And then no surprises for the bait. <laughs> Shot bought lug. Made a mad dash into the angling centre just to get those. Simply going to use. Uh, the old favourite which is a three hook flapper you can hit these lug they'll tighten up a bit nice and black and sticky these wrap ones and then we're just going to use size uh, two hooks today really small just thread that worm on varying it a bit usually just pinch the end off that Nice and simple on the three hook flapper. So we're kind of realistically, I think we might be able to get a whiting in the next hour or so. It's on the ebb tide. Would, wouldn't mind a flatfish though. Still some soul being caught here. Just give that lug a little bit of a whack. Firms it up. Makes it just easier to run along the hook. Can use a baiting needle. As I say, everything is very rushed today. I'm making a few compromises. I always say planning is <laughs> planning is essential, isn't it? But that won't be the case today. And as you sure you know, always set your tripod up first. I did, and then lobbed it on the floor. <laughs> I was using it to focus the camera. So there's a nice little run of tide there. I do like that. I like a bit of movement in the sea. On the ebb here. Look at that. I can even run. So the second rod is just a bass rod really. Uh, my old battered reel, don't even know if it's got a brand name that one. I'm using 18 pound line all the way through and then I just lobbed a load of stuff there into the tackle box. Very unprofessional. Three ounce lead there as well. And then on that uh, little bass rod, we're just going to put on a pulley rig and drop this one short. I'm going to put on the lug uh, with it to start off with, but uh, if I get a pout, I'll stick a pout in on the live bait. Simply it really. A couple of 4 hooks, nice 3 ounce lead. And the pulley rig. And pack the... Uh, Run bait onto that. I've started using fluorocarbon for the snood lines now uh, because the bass might well get spooked by the amnesia. As good as amnesia is, um, I know a lot of match anglers sort of swear by the fluorocarbon now for their rigs, so I will follow suit. Not all my rigs are made up in fluoro, but um, particularly if you're going for bass, it's something you might want to do. Do have to check it though after every cast and after every fish. I'm rushing everything today. So there we go, two rods out. Travelling relatively light as well. 
they've got a really good feel to them the continental rods you can definitely tell the difference between one fish sitting on the line and another coming for the second hook and in fact they probably even with this light bass rod probably get more sensitivity out of that larger 14 foot continental than the old fashioned bass rod sat there on its right on the right hand side That pen surf blaster, and I've mentioned it a few times, it's been faultless. Let's get it out and cast, no trouble at all. Uh, looks like a little nibble on there that's on the red rod because it's a distance i'm not worried about it being the surf in front of me that's plucking on the line but they're so sensitive that could be absolutely tiny let's go and have a look What I'm going to do, I'm going to put that in as live bait. It's a little bit big to be honest. Being a white in it won't last too long. You never know. Let's bait him up and lob him in.
just a little whiting. Definitely fish on here. Gonna keep going, see if I can get something a bit smaller for the live bait. A little bit lanky that one for me. Uh, today they're welcome though, because I've only uh, got an hour or so to kill so look at that you see there on its face that's an old injury you can see there where he's been attacked in the past this is an old wound here there's a bit of blood where i've hooked him but basically that is an old wound and his eye is uh, disjointed as well so at some point a bigger predatory fish has had a go give him another chance Well, it's pretty non-stop. I've got one on this black rod. I've got one again on the Continental. Just about to run through the comments we had on the last video uh, but for watching this one thanks ever so much not particularly exciting again but hey what do you think of whiting are they really worth the effort are they a pain or when you have those days when you know you blank uh, is it worth just celebrating catching the odd whiting thanks ever so much for watching um, and do take a look at some of these comments that people made on the last video there's usually some really good tips in here, uh, thanks to the community that have uh, added to Saltwater Angler. So appreciate that, guys. One man in his yak, uh, he said, if you want to catch conga, then fish the Bristol Channel up around Western Supermare on the rock. Goes in to talk about the details, how you might be catching them up there. So for anyone that uh, wants to take a look at the Bristol Channel, I have actually fished uh, there before it's an excellent set of marks all the way along up the Bristol Channel proper conga fishing autistic angler uh, mentioned that it was lucky to catch the conga during the daytime I agree with that yeah definitely Steve Coop said great video mate good watch as always no problems with live baiting myself it's what happens naturally in the sea anyway uh, a lot of people agreeing there with what Steve's saying uh, John Rass came up with a very interesting one. Vines circle hooks help with catch and release. Yep, definitely tried them, but I've missed fish uh, with those as well. Nice conga says fishing bug. Noticed a higher catch report of congas the last few years. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when fishing from such a height, are there occasions where the fish have managed to fall back into the water whilst pulling up the line? Uh, that's Colin Traveller. I've never had that. I'm sure people have and it is a risky business retrieving the fish all the way up to the top of the pier but 
Uh, obviously you want a drop net but I've never had it happen to myself. Uh, Nemesis is one of our, oh it's Nemesis SSLR, one of our regular contributors. Uh, he says he never bothers with the worm holders, piece of mackerel or squid after the worm of course. And that is another good way of keeping the lug worm on. Uh, he's talking about some recent catches as well. Well worth uh, reading what Nemesis uh, puts on here. Saltwater lure fishing, check them out as well. Just underneath there, you can see that. Hi mate, nice trick to use, which is cheaper, is to keep, uh, is to cut a piece of thick rubber band, five to eight mil squared, put it on the point after baiting up, and force round to the desired area. That way the worm won't slip down onto the gape of the hook. Uh, so you kind of really needed to watch this video just for a lot of this to make sense. Uh, Fish Hunter UK, again another um, subscriber that comments quite a lot. Uh, nice fish, well done with the digging, but he did say I was right. I should really have one of those uh, wider forks as well. So. so there we go. Thanks very much, guys, for all of the comments.